is a quick update to counting points in polygons in QGIS. So this changed relatively recently in one of the um, latest updates to QGIS. And the way you want to do this is you have two layers. And um, first, before I do anything, I want to make sure they're in the same projection. If they're not in the same projection, or as you'll often see in QGIS, CRS, if they're not in the same one, then counting points and polygons isn't going to work because the data is not actually lining up. And an easy way to see that in the latest QGIS is you can hover over any layer name in the layers panel. You can see the name and then in parentheses what the projection is. So this one's in 4326. If I look at the city council districts, this is in some kind of user projection. I don't, I'm not going to trust that. So I'm going to save this one in 4326. So do that before you do anything else, uh, just to be sure. I'll call this city council district 4326. All right. And I'm going to make sure I pick the same one as the other layer. If it's not here, it is here because it's a commonly used one. If it's not, you can click here and find the right one. Okay, once I have saved it into the right projection, I'm going to delete the other one because I don't want to get confused by it. Okay, so if possible, get down to just the two layers that you're doing this with. Okay, so there are two ways to do this. I'll show you the hard way first. The hard way is to go to Vector, Data Management Tools, Join attributes by location. So this is, you're doing a spatial join, um, and that spatial join is going to count the number of points in each polygon. Uh, so the target vector layer is always the layer that you want the counts to end up on. So I'm counting the number of points in each polygon. I want the counts to end up on the polygons. So whenever you're counting points in polygons this way, this is always going to be your polygons. And the join vector layer is the points. So in this case, these are Uber pickups from one day in 2014, by the way. And I'm going to pick intersects. So choose the Uber pickups that intersect with each city council district. I'm going to skip the precision and I'm going to look at this. So I want to take a summary of intersecting features, which will include the count. I'm going to get rid of the statistics, although if you had interesting numeric columns, you could do a sum or mean and so on. Um, to keep it simple, I'm going to remove those. And the joins table, I want to keep all the records. So um, if we look at our map, there might be some city council districts with no I just messed that up, with no pickups. It looks like maybe this one in Staten Island has no pickups. I want to include it anyway um, in, the, in the file that this makes. Okay, so that's all that says. Keep all the records. And I'm going to run. I'm going to create a temporary layer for now. And I'll run. And this should take a second or two. It shouldn't take too long. Um, but if it goes very fast, like less than a second, there's a chance that your projections are wrong. All right, so we see now in our layers panel, we have three layers. I'll turn off the other ones so we can see just the joined layer. And if I open the attribute table on that, you should see there's a count column and it should be a numeric column and yeah should have the number of points in each polygon. And to be certain, I'm going to pick one of those and turn on my points and make sure that it makes sense. So yes, this one does have a lot of them. So it has over 2,000. Let's look at one with two. Okay, it's out here. And I can visually see from here there are two. Perfect. Great. So if I wanted to keep that, I would need to save as and save that as its own shapefile. 
I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to show you another way to do exactly what we just did. It's a little bit simpler. Um, so I'm going to remove that from my layers panel and I'm going to go over to the processing toolbox instead of what we did before. So if you don't see the processing toolbox, I can turn it off right now. Go up to the processing menu and turn on toolbox and it will be a tab with the layer styling. So they should both show up over here. And what the processing toolbox is, is it's, it's an assortment of algorithms that you can use. Um, and I will often search in here if I'm trying to do something. So let's say I'm counting points in Polygon, or if I'm looking for points in Polygon. This is a very common GIS operation. So you see that there are actually multiple ways to do that here in QGIS. And um, I'm just going to pick the first one. And if you double click on that, it's going to open a dialog very similar to the one we just saw, but it has fewer options and it's a little bit harder to get confused. And you can see that instead of saying join vector layer and target vector layer, it just says polygons and points. It looks like, in this case at least, it intelligently picked the polygons and the points for me. It's lovely. I can change the count field name to something like total uh, or num pickups, say. And again, I'll create a temporary layer. You could save to a file here. I'm just going to create a temporary one. You see that happened a little bit faster too. If I open up the attribute table, it's still a numeric column. It's the same exact results. Um, and now if I wanted to really quickly just do a graduated style based on what we just picked, um, based on the count rather, I'll go over the layer styling, make that a little bit bigger, pick graduated instead of single symbol, and my map disappears because I have no classes yet. And for the column, I'm going to pick that count column that I just made and I'm going to say do it by color. I'll pick a color ramp. I'm going to make it, um, we'll start with an equal interval mode and hit classify and you'll see okay there's not much differentiation here <laughs> in outside of Manhattan there is no differentiation so it's not giving us much information. So I'm going to try some other ones. Often I feel like natural breaks is going to differentiate between um, the different features pretty well, um, but definitely experiment with these. And pick the one that works best for your map. If you're having a hard time picking one that you think works well, I recommend looking at the histogram feature. Um, I'll make it a little bit bigger so we can see it. So what this is doing is it's showing you the number of council districts, um, the frequency with which they have certain counts. Um, so there's only one council district with this many um, pickups. There's only one here, and you can see that those are these two. Uh, so you can see these lines are the dividing lines between the buckets, the classes that Q just made for us. So we can actually if we wanted to include um, more in the biggest bucket, I can click here and drag it over. And you can see that this one is now included here. Um, usually I wouldn't recommend tweaking things this way, um, but it's an option to you. And it at least gives you an idea of how um, frequently these numbers are coming up. And you can see looking at this that um, the the fact that there are so many council districts down here it kind of makes sense because they're, that's just the most frequent class. So it kind of makes sense that they're all yellowish. Okay, and last thing I should note, um, <clears throat> you'll probably want to save as on this temporary layer. If I close QGIS with this temporary layer, I lose that forever. So 
I will often, if you look back at the counts in Polygon, count points in Polygon, I'll often start with a temporary layer until I'm sure that it's the one that I want, and then I'll save that. And that way you avoid getting so many uh, temporary files on your in your file system, clogging things up, uh, so files that you no longer need. So that's the quick way to count points, poly points and polygons in QGIS, and I hope it was helpful.